so much for being such a good audience. Hi, I'm Dennis Bush, and it got started. It was an assignment for my Master of Fine Arts program in creative writing. It was a screenwriting class, advanced screenwriting. And um, everybody else in the class was writing sad, depressing, um, shitty films. And <laughs> I wanted to do something that was different and light and fluffy and sweet and romantic. And um, so I did. And um, I've been working in the business for a long time. I do a lot of um, script doctoring and uh, dialogue doctoring for um, film and theater. And so I didn't want to submit the project. Once it was finished, I was kind of done. And um, the professor said, it's part of the assignment. You have to submit it. I said, but the people who I fix things for like that I don't have projects that compete with theirs. And he said, too bad. And so I submitted it on the very last day at 11.50-something uh, p.m., and the deadline was midnight, and um, uh, submitted it to a networking site for screenwriters and producers. And um, 12 hours later, um, I had an option offer from Rosser. And um, yeah. So which was fun, and um, she, her first words were, let me tell you why sh you should let me option your script. And um, it started then, and it, it happened really quickly, I mean, for, for all of us. Generally, in the business, it takes three to five years to get something done, and I, it's a very strange percentage of the number of scripts that actually get optioned that get to the next step and then the next step. And all along, everybody that I know would say, you know, this doesn't happen. And I know, it doesn't happen. You don't get optioned right away. You don't get it. It doesn't move forward. And then six months, and then they send you another check to keep the option alive. And that was nice. And um, it kept moving forward and moving forward. And from the very first draft of this through the shoot, was a year and a half. So it moved really, really quickly. And that's a testament to uh, Roster Goodman, the director, who sends her regards. Um, and everyone connected with the film is very grateful to the Desperado Film Festival for this prime slot uh, Saturday evening and um, for your hospitality. And so I will pass to Kate. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I, I really appreciate you guys coming out. It's a, it's a strange process uh, putting together a movie. There's so many different people working on it at any given time, bringing what they bring. But it really all started from Dennis Bush's imagination. And I really want to just uh, the tribute to that, you know, these great characters and the, and the heart that they had uh, that all really originated with Dennis. And, and I just, it was a thrill to get to take that and add what I brought to it. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, won't bore you too much, but uh, I uh, originally uh, got into screenwriting. I'm, I'm a musician and a singer and a songwriter, and that's what I do most of the time is I make music and I tour around. Uh, and it was uh, at Scottsdale Community College a few years ago, I got involved in the screenwriting program. And, and, and sort of like, uh, like Dennis is talking about here, the class project was to write a script, and I wrote a script that I had no, you know, I'd never written before. And eventually, that script led me to uh, the Los Angeles, the Outfest Film Festival, has a like a sort of a screenwriting lab. And so my script led me there, and it was actually one of my lab mentors who connected me with Rosser, uh, and that's sort of how I came on board, uh, love or whatever. And and uh, I think it was a good combination. Uh, uh, we, ne we, ne we never actually worked together, like sat in a room together and worked, but we sort of meshed our our creative ideas together, and, and it was a real thrill. So. It, it's true. It was a very strange thing. It was a very strange thing that, uh, that, that you know, I, I had kind of, uh, if I dare say, uh, I, I misled Rosser. Uh, 
Uh, I misled them into thinking I lived in Los Angeles because there, there tends to be a little bit of a, a favoritism for Los Angeles-based people. And so, uh, so when I was, you know, interviewing to, to bring my sort of talent to the, to the project, they, they said, where, where did you come in from? I said, Studio City, because that's the place where my friend lived, who I'd been sleeping on their sofa. I said, yeah, I came in from Studio City. And so it was probably five to six months later they figured out that I was, that I was from Phoenix. And, and, and so we, we ended up a sort of tag team representing the city of Phoenix uh, in Los Angeles. And it was a lot of fun. Um, so let's have some questions, I guess, Helen. Any, anyone at all? What inspired you to create this film? Uh, the people in my life. Um, some of the characters are named for people in my life. Um, the Melissa character is named for two Melissas, one of whom is back there. Um, the pizza man is inspired by the handsome uh, man next to her. Um, one of my best friends is named Kelsey. Um, it was just sort of mixing and matching people and ideas and um, then things change as it goes along. The first draft was set in um, suburban Pennsylvania and um, my first meeting with Rosser was um, can we change the location to any town? So you tweak it and then can we change the location to LA but not in LA? So you tweak it and then can we change it to in LA? Yes. Uh, and then I was um, on the way to New York for a meeting with a producer about one of my plays and I arrived to a message that said grinder bringing marketing money must work grinder into plot. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and it happens, it's a, it's a very different process. Um, film and TV is very different than writing for the theater, which I do primarily. And so all along the way, somebody else is really running the show. I, I mean, I, I don't know how many of you work in theater or, or know about theater, but um, in theater, no one can change even a word written by the playwright without written permission, and you're involved in every step of the process. Um, for this, my deal was um, a rewrite and a polish, which means a, a complete rewrite, which included all of those location changes and adding grinder, and then a polish on top of that, and then um, I'm essentially done, and uh, I wait until the film begins shooting, if the film begins shooting, because that's when the writer gets paid. You get, um, that's when your check happens, is the first day of principal photography, which I really never thought was going to happen. So, when it did, yay. <laughs> um, so, other question? Yes. Thank you. Character, which is going to be kind of crazy. I don't need that. That's loud. Oh, people in the back. Hi. Hi. Um, the um, character with the mountain lion was hilarious. That's all the, Kate. Was that you? That was Thank hilarious. You. Let me tell you uh, a little bit about how that came about. Of course, that, uh, you know, um, you get uh, a wonderful actress uh, like Kate Flannery from The Office. Uh, uh, it, 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 like Dennis said, you're shooting an independent film and a lot of times you, the director calls you up and says, I've got twins. Like, I have twins. Work them in. Their production value. I have twins. Put the twins in. You know, or, you know, or, you know, that thing that you said in a bookstore, we can't get a bookstore. Make it something else. So we made it something else. But then you get the call, yeah, I've got Kate Flannery from The Office. What can you do with Kate Flannery from The Office? Like, I can do anything you want me to do with Kate Flannery from The Office. And, uh, and we had originally uh, written a scene there that was sad. 
uh, before, before it was Kate Flannery from The Office, we wanted to establish that Corey was a nice guy because lots of less than nice things are done by various characters in the movies. They're selfish or they do this or they do that that are maybe not what you would want to do if your mom was watching. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> And so we had a scene at the beginning where it was a person who was in terrible sadness and Corey comforted them and the audience was supposed to go, oh, Corey's a nice guy. I will excuse his horrendous behavior later in the film. Uh, and then Kate Flannery from The Office is available for a day. And so we'll write something funny. So I wrote something funny which is basically what you saw and I sent it to Rosser and Gia Sally is one of the producers and they said, we cannot ask Kate Flannery to say that she got made love to by a mountain lion. That's Kate Flannery from The Office. If she reads this, why, she'll be outraged and she'll drop out of the film. And, uh, and so they wouldn't show it to her. And uh, fortunately, I had a friend who knew Kate Flannery, and I was able to get a hold of Kate Flannery and, and send her the script in sort of a, a backdoor, <clears throat> so to speak, a backdoor fashion. And I said, I know it's a little racy, but, you know, will you do this scene where you accidentally had sex with a mountain lion? <laughs> and, uh, and she loved it, because, of course, on The Office, she's, you know, she's exposed herself and done all sorts of, you know, embarrassing, drunken things on The Office, and, and she loved it. And I think the biggest problem we had that day was that the camera people and the, the, the lighting folks could not keep it together when we were filming that scene. <laughs> So, so that's sort of how that came about, and it was just a nice little add on there to, to kickstart the movie, and, and you know, I'm so glad you guys liked it too. So, more questions? I'll tell you just a little bit while you guys are pondering your next question, and I know that there is one. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, we were talking about the, sort of the, the, the fact that we, uh, you know, from Dennis's first draft to getting this thing filmed just record time for an independent film. And I'll tell you, we shot the entire film, start to finish, 12 days, which is just unheard of. Picking up locations and, you know, grabbing every warm body, including me, uh, <laughs> and, and shoving them onto the screen to try to fill out the cafeteria and stuff. So, you know, usually you're looking at 25, 30 days, at, you know, on a, on a quick movie. So, so that is... ...break down for the shoot and walk out into the living room and say, there's no way in hell they're going to shoot this. There's no way. This is not possible. Um, but Rosser is amazing in many ways. Um, running a tight ship and having a great crew that loves her and is dedicated to her. A lot of the, uh, the colorist and uh, the score, all of the elements that normally cost huge amounts of money, she was able to get uh, at a discount, um, which helps with the overall budget cost. Yes? Well, I uh, don't want to ruin the movie magic for you, but I will, I will tell you everything that I know. Uh, the, the coffee house and the bar uh, where John and Melissa first hook up, same building. Uh, well, the coffee house is in the front, the, the, the bar was in the back. The movie theater was directly across the street. And then um, there was an apartment set, well it wasn't a set, it was an actual apartment, uh, which was then uh, over by CBS Radford, if you happen to be from LA, you probably know where that is. And, and then a little bit on the Paramount lot, that's, I totally forgot about that, thank you. <laughs> right, right outside of Rosser's office. And then the outdoor scenes were Griffith Park in LA. If you've ever been to LA, up, you know, sort of by the Observatory and Zoo, that's where they filmed that. So, mostly pretty close in. Which saves time. That's, that's a smart location manager, putting a shoot together that involves less travel time. Anything else? Oh, yes. I'm gonna let Dennis start that one. Yes, um, I knew Tyler sort of, two or three people between us knew each other kind of. I loved what he did. I love the moment after he and um, Pete are together, the bed scene and Rosser gave him that minute um, with the light on his face to have that transition, which was gorgeous. Um, he's really talented, Joel's wonderful and very sweet. 
um, Jenica, uh, Jennifer Lee, they're all really, really talented and fun. You know, it's, uh, as a writer, and I'm, I'm sure Dennis probably agrees with this, uh, well, I should assume, but uh, <laughs> we sit in a room, we, uh, you know, we imagine this from our friends, you know, uh, his friends sort of were the, were the impetus for his, and then when I took it, I, I applied various people that were in my life to those characters too, and then the actors take it to a whole different level, and, and I was there for some of the shoot, uh, and I was sitting back there, and I was like, well, that's not how that goes. No, that's not what I meant. No, 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 you're doing that all wrong. And of course, I then it comes together, and it's like, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong. They were beautiful, and they were. It was, it was truly. They add so much more. You just have to let go of that. I'm in my room writing this. This is how it sounds to me. Thing, and let them breathe life into what you're doing. And that's what they did so well. And and every one of them was just a joy. So. Yeah, and during the casting process, I was getting. Headshots via email, and you know, what do you think? Does, does he look like what you want him to look like? And all of those kinds of things. You guys were fantastic. It was a beautiful film, and I'm sure everyone agrees it was, it was fantastic. Very funny. Um, so what are the both of you working on now? Do you have anything that we'll be seeing in the future? Uh, I have a screenplay that's currently in the hands of a producer in Vegas. Uh, I have another solo screenplay just about finished. I'm collaborating with a screenwriter, director in LA, um, a writer, director in New York, and another writer in San Francisco. I have two plays optioned for commercial runs in New York, and I'm working on another new play right now. So, and I teach. But other than that, mostly at loose ends, right? I, I don't have to cook, I don't have to clean. Um, all of that is handled by an amazing person. This is, this is what we need in our lives, yes. Um, I am, uh, as, as I mentioned, a singer in a you know, rock and roll type band, and so I'm booking a tour, and I am still writing. I write for, uh, for Echo Magazine, which is a, a joy. That's Glenn from Echo Magazine right there. He's been kind enough to put us on the cover of this issue. We really appreciate that. And uh, in addition to that, I am actually working on a pilot for the BBC. We'll see if it, uh, if it gets picked up, but that's, that's what's devo devoting my writing time to right now, is, is a little British sitcom. So, so thank you for asking the question. Free plugs, thank you. Mm. Yes? You mentioned you made some of the I would tell you that privately in a dark hallway. <laughs> oh. The puppet. <sighs> it's all the right, the right eyes on the page at the right moment. I mean, I work, uh, I'm in New York about once a month, sometimes more. Um, I, I coach um, professional writers and professional actors um, in person sometimes, sometimes on the phone. Um, I have clients that I will email last minute notes before they go shoot something. Um, this is where I choose to make my life. And um, since I've been in the business a long time, I mean, this is about 30 years for me. Um, living here is possible. I don't think it's as possible if you are just starting out in the business because part of it is knowing people and knowing how to network. Um, so I haven't really suffered by being here uh, because I travel and work with people on both coasts. Uh, but it's, it's definitely the opportunities are more precious and um, you have to know when to work it. Uh, I mean, if any of you are writers, the most important thing to, to know is that when you have an opportunity to pitch, be ready to pitch. Have a log line ready, and when somebody in an elevator says, what are you working on? Have something to tell them, because that person may be the one who green lights your project. Absolutely agree with everything uh, that Dennis said there. Um, 
the day and age we live in with the internet, with you know, different kinds of services that can get your ideas out to producers, on the one hand, it's probably easier than it's ever been to get your material to a place where it can be seen by someone who can do something about it. On the other, you know, on the, the flip side is that if you're in Los Angeles, if you can pretend well to be in Los Angeles, uh, you're going to have more opportunities for something spur of the moment that, you know, that comes out of the blue. And uh, as I said, you know, I sat here in Phoenix and I wrote a script that did well in a competition. I sent it off to Los Angeles and crossed my fingers and basically just forgot about it at that point. You know, you don't think anything's going to come of these things. But by sending that off, it landed in the hands of people who cared. And that is what enabled me to, to go out and interview for the job and, and to do this work. So if it's something that you really want to do, take advantage of those kinds of opportunities. Take advantage of competitions. Take advantage of the, you know, the online script services that can get your logline and, and the idea of your script to people. If, it, if it's really what you're passionate about, don't, don't say, I can't do it because I'm in Phoenix. You can absolutely do it. Plus, in addition to that, this, this is, you know, more and more a great place to make movies. There's more people in town now than ever that are out there trying to make films, that are working on independent films. You know, I, I, I was singing at a gig uh, like a year and a half ago. I stopped. I, I got off stage. I said hello to a friend. I said, I got to go to Los Angeles. I'm, I'm work, just starting work on this script. He said, I also have a script that I'm working on in Los Angeles. So it's, it's, it's a common thing. It's, it can happen and go get them. That's what I say. So. Should I start on that one or should you start on that one? I think you should start on that one since you started the project. So. Yes, I sleep. It, it happened more quickly than I thought it would, and after a while, it's just something, I, I mean, at this point, it's now a little over two years ago, so, I mean, when you're doing something in theater, you're rehearsing, and then there you go, you're right into it. Um, with film and TV, you write it, I mean, the cast shot August of... 2011, yeah, 2011, so... Um, they're all, I mean, when we see each other, I saw um, most of the producers and several of the cast members uh, in Palm Springs for the film festival there, and everybody's talking about what you're working on now, and, um, oh, you're shooting with her, and, oh, yeah, I did a project with her, and that kind of thing. Um, but this is really wonderful. You guys were a great audience. Really, really wonderful. Um, it was exciting at the premiere to, uh, I had lived in San Francisco, so to see it uh, on the screen at the Castro with a thousand people, laughing at the right spots and, um, you know, getting teary was really wonderful and exciting. Um, Palm Springs was exciting. Um, we sold out the theater and they had to move us to a bigger space. Um, so it's been really exciting along the way and as the film has played Barcelona and Hong Kong and um, all over the United States, um, I, you get an email from someone who says, you know, I saw your film in Rochester and it touched my life and I got laid Thank you. Um, so it's been a really lovely, lovely journey. And um, in this business, that's not always the case. Um, but Rosser from day one with me, and I, I'm sure with you, um, has treated us very kindly and involved us in the process and um, kept us involved. And um, my checks came early and cleared. Um, I mean, really, in this business, you don't get your check early ever, and um, I had my, my final purchase check five or six days before principal photography started. So um, it's that kind of classy treatment all the way, and um, Gio Masali, one of the producers, um, Camelia Monet, uh, all of the production team has been really lovely all the way down. Absolutely, and uh, uh, ditto on all of that, absolutely. For me, just to, to quickly answer uh, uh, what you were asking about there in terms of the journey, uh, it was extremely exciting. 
Um, it was kind of out of the blue. Um, it was Guinevere Turner, actually, who's an actress and a writer, uh, was my mentor at Outfest, who, who said, hey, do you want to write this movie for my friend? Drove to Los Angeles quick like a bunny. And, uh, and interviewed with those guys, and they have offices on the Paramount Studios lot. I am a kid from the trailer park in North Phoenix, ladies and gentlemen, just outside Turf Paradise, and I drove a car through the gates of the Paramount lot where the Marx Brothers drove their car, where Preston Sturgis drove his car <laughs> to interview for this job. So yeah, I had little rubber knees and was, <laughs> but I, I tried to put, you know, put on a good game face, and you know, yeah, yeah, no, I'm the person, I'm the person you should hire for sure. And, uh, and yeah, it, was, it, it really was a little bit like winning the lottery. I mean, I'd done the groundwork. I thought I could write funny, I hoped. But you just never know until you're in that situation what, what it's going to feel like. And it, it, it was great. So, and it's been, it's been a great journey to, to be here tonight. And I'm so happy to finally have it. As, as Dennis said, it's been, in, it's been in Spain, it's been in Hong Kong, it's been, you know, we, we saw it together in San Francisco, it's been all over the world, but it hasn't been here for our hometown audience, and you guys gave us such a warm welcome. Thank you so much for, for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. Alan, thank you so much for having us, having the film. Thank you guys very, very much. <laughs>